Hi, I'm Ken Alling, founder of MELD. In this video, we're going to go through MELD and its unique architecture and the benefits that it brings and all of the different products and services connected to it. So with that, MELD is a layer one proof of stake blockchain. We're EVM compatible and we're multi-chain. So we're friendly to other chains and we want to connect to other chains. So what it means to be a proof of stake blockchain, we have nodes that are on the blockchain. So each of these are the different nodes. Uh, people run these nodes. So these are not run by meld, um, they're run by normal people. Um, and this means that the blockchain is decentralized. So it's not controlled by one specific entity. And meld is a proof of stake blockchain, meaning that users can stake meld tokens onto the chain and they get to choose which of the nodes that they want to stake to. So this guy wants to stake to this one, so does this, and this guy wants to stake to this one, and nobody wants to stake to the, to the last. So in a proof of stake blockchain, when people are staking their MELD tokens, they're effectively voting to decide which of these nodes are more trustworthy. So they're using their tokens to, to kind of cast a vote and say, we think this is probably the safest and the best behaving node, and this is the least. And as a result of that, then this is more likely to generate a block than this is to generate a block. And when users stake, they generate a yield from that. Typically, this yield is going to come from a transaction. So here, I have users who are sending an asset from one place to another. And when you send a transaction, you have a transaction fee. And that transaction fee in a traditional blockchain is going to be divided up and given to the people running the nodes to pay for the network. So the fee that you're paying in transaction goes to pay for the node operators and the sort of cost of them being able to build it and hopefully some profit. In some proof of stake blockchains, you also have an alternative way of doing it, which is the protocol or the blockchain just mints a whole bunch of tokens to the treasury, and then they use that token treasury to be able to pay for the block rewards. So MELD doesn't like this process. Um, the problem with this is that the users want to have cheaper transaction fees, while the people running the network want to have higher transaction fees. So there's a disconnect in regards to the goals of people on the blockchain. And so what you see is on some chains, the, as the token price goes up, the transaction fees become huge. And there's no way to really kind of solve this because if you reduce transaction fees, these guys don't make enough money to run their system and then they will just leave. And if the transaction fees are very high, then it makes it difficult for people to do transactions. So the way that MELD has solved this is on the layer one blockchain, we have a native supplying and borrowing protocol. So what this means is that users can supply tokens into the, into the protocol. So they're able to supply a token here and other users can borrow that token. So they can borrow it. And if you supply a token, then you will get a yield in return, let's say 3%. And if you borrow, then you have to pay interest to borrow it, let's say 5%. So this is its own economic model. So you generate uh, economic activity, you generate revenue from this. And so what we have done is we've said, well, let's connect our supplying and borrowing protocol to our proof of stake blockchain. So revenue generated here pays the block rewards. And so when I do that, it means that I no longer have any pressure on the transaction fees. So these do not have to be high transaction fees anymore because they're not going to pay for the network. So now this transaction fee can be incredibly small. In the case of MELD, it's 0 0.000 cents per transaction. It's a tiny fraction of a cent per transaction. 
But the more people that use our blockchain, the more users that use the supplying and borrowing protocol, the more revenue that goes into this, the more value that goes into this, the more people that supply to it, the more people that borrow, the more revenue that's generated, the higher the yield is for the actual proof of stake blockchain. So the higher the yield these guys are going to get. So we've created a novel architecture where we connect supplying and borrowing to the proof of stake blockchain to solve the problem of high transaction fees. And we don't have to worry about you know, creating a huge treasury that will eventually run out. So in addition to this, we also have a native bridge and a native yield that connects multiple blockchains to the MELD blockchain. So here's another blockchain, an external blockchain. And MELD is not single chain centric. We believe that you should be able to move between multiple chains. We believe that you should go to the chain that provides you with the best service or the best product in the space rather than being locked into a specific chain. And so with that, we have created a bridge where you can take your asset from one chain and put it onto another. Normally when you bridge, then the asset gets locked here and then you have a copy of it here and you're able to do stuff with it on the chain. You can take it and put it into the lending and borrow, supplying and borrowing protocol. But we've also done something here that's a bit different where once you actually bridge, then the asset that's normally locked, we still lock it but we lock it into a native stake pool. And that native stake pool generates a yield. So in the case of Ethereum or Avalanche or Cardano, you put it into the native staking and it generates a yield. And then what do we do with that yield? That yield is then taken and put into the supplying and borrowing protocol. So now you bring your assets from other chains onto the Melt blockchain and the act of doing that is going to start generating you yield. And if you want to capture that yield, if you want to collect it, you take your token, whatever it may be, and you put it into the supplying and borrowing protocol. So let's say this yield is uh, 4%, for example. Then I'm supplying, but the yield that I'm going to get back is not 3%. It's going to be 3% plus 4%. You're going to get both of these. This is what we call yield boost. This is a unique characteristic to the MELD blockchain and to the MELD supply, uh, supply and borrow protocol. So these are some of the key characteristics that we have in the MELD blockchain that are built into the kind of layer one, that are built into the core part of the chain. So one of the other key characteristics we have is the ability to supply an asset and then borrow, but when you supply it and then you do the, you do the borrow, you, take, you can take out what's called a genius loan. And that genius loan means that the interest that you generate based on what you've supplied, this three plus four, will go to pay down the interest, the yield you've made, that will go to pay down the interest on the loan that you've taken out. So it's a self-paying loan. And because we have yield boost, in a lot of cases, the yield you're gonna generate is gonna be much higher than the interest you're going to pay. So you will be net interest positive in this situation. So as an overview, MELD is a layer one EVM blockchain, proof of stake. You're able to stake your MELD tokens onto it and generate a yield. Because we have a supplying and borrowing protocol built into the layer one blockchain, we no longer have to worry about gas fees being high to cover the costs. We can get rid of that and gas fees will forever be sub one cent. So that means everybody using the chain has super cheap transactions and you're able to bridge your assets from other chains to generate a yield that goes into the supplying and borrowing protocol. And on top of that, you can take out loans 
that are um, self-paying. So <coughs> this is a lot, but we have one more thing. So meld, the name, came from the idea of being able to bring together crypto and fiat. So meld also has fiat services and fiat rails. So what this means is we have connections into traditional financial institutions allowing us to have depository accounts, allowing us to have debit cards, and allowing us to be able to do on-ramping and off-ramping. So as a result of this, we can connect this to our supply and borrow and you're able to supply an asset in the crypto world and you're able to borrow fiat. Or you're able to take your stable coins and put them on the meld blockchain and use your debit card to be able to pay for a cup of coffee. Or you're able to take your fiat over here in your depository account and put it on chain as a stable coin and generate a yield from that. So we're a normal blockchain that has these unique characteristics that are connected to it that make us very efficient and very user friendly when it comes to generating yield. If you notice, I'm using the word yield a lot all over the place. Here I'm generating a yield. Here I'm generating a yield. Here I'm generating a yield. We want, it, we want a blockchain that makes it possible that when you're using it in as many cases as possible, you're always generating income from the capital or from the assets that you have on chain. So I hope that you thought this was a useful summary. I invite you to try out the Meld blockchain, try out more information. You can get information from meld.com. And thank you very much for watching this video and uh, hopefully we'll see you on another one.